this fall was supposed to be our season of rejoicing. We had such high hopes. After a year of lockdown and isolation and fear, the spring, early summer gave us a taste of life post-pandemic. We ate inside restaurants. We gathered freely with our friends. We traveled to see loved ones. We hugged our families for the first time in a year. Each of us, all of us, were elated. And now, mech. <laughs> we see it all closing in again. Our lives are getting smaller again. The COVID rates in Florida during this wave are worse than they have ever been. In the first year and a half of the pandemic, two of our members died of COVID-19. In August, we lost three more. We are fearful. We are angry. And more than anything else, we're disappointed. It's just so disheartening. I'm disheartened. It feels like a kick in the gut. I had so many plans for our temple to be back together again, united for the holidays, chatting at Oneg's on Friday night dancing at B'nai Mitzvah parties. And now, and now it's like we made it through a long winter and after a week of spring, we're facing another long winter. But my congregation, I have a message for you. We are resilient. Though we are down, we are resilient. You are going to make it through this. You are stronger than you know. Everyone did home improvements this past year. At my house, it was our front yard. We hired a landscaping firm and they ripped out everything a clean slate. They turned the earth, put a new layer of soil, and planted fresh landscape. It looks gorgeous. But something happened that I did not expect. Six weeks later, up pops a fresh shoot of Purple Queen. I planted Purple Queen 15 years ago. <laughs> the landscaper didn't like it, so he ripped it out. But here it was. And then another shoot over there. And another one. And another one. Elaine and I marveled over each one. Life finds a way. The landscaper hates it, and he wants to pluck them all out. We told him, no, not yet. It stays for now, out of respect. <laughs> Life finds a way. Our temple members are like that. They found a way. The pandemic came and shut off our lives, and our temple members found a way around. Our seniors learned how to use Zoom and attend services on the live stream. You didn't know how to do that before, <laughs> and now you do. You figured it out, and good for you. 
and the parents in our temple, with children and teens at home? How have they made it through this year? How did they manage homeschooling and keeping their family safe and still giving them a life worth living? How did you do that? There was no playbook. Your parents never did this. But you found your way through. This temple. Oh my gosh, this temple. We found a way. The committee chairs went online. They brought us together to learn and interact with one another and bring some joy to our lives. With Zoom, we had scholars from all over the country and musicians and performers. We even had a magician from New Jersey. He was great. There was a crisis and we adapted. That is resilience. And in some ways, we are even stronger for it. I remember in the first week of the lockdown, we had a very particular crisis. Several of our members were in recovery. And for years, they'd been going to meetings and staying sober. But now, all the meetings stopped at once at the worst possible time. Our members were isolated and stressed and vulnerable to relapse. We called up one of our members and asked her, please, to start a virtual AA meeting, the first Jewish one in town. And she did. And she does every week for the last 70 weeks. And the people love it. It's the first time in their lives they've ever been in a Jewish recovery group. <laughs> Jews all over the region join in. We faced a new problem and found a new way. The Jewish people are resilient and famously so. We're the most resilient people in the history of the world, through 3,000 years of ups and downs, exiles and expulsions, we have carried on and persevered. We are the marvel of the world. Certainly, Mark Twain felt that way. Mark Twain wrote, the Egyptian, the Babylonian, and the Persian rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, and then faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greek and the Roman followed and made a vast noise, and they are gone. Other peoples have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out, and they, sweat, and they sit in twilight now, or have vanished. The Jew saw them all and beat them all. All things are mortal but the Jew. All forces pass, but the Jew remains. Yes, we do. So we're having a bad moment now. And the Delta variant is bringing us down. But we will get through this because we are Israel. And frankly, we have faced worse. Your great, great grandfather was King David, who was just a boy when he slew Goliath with a slingshot. Your uncle was Moshe Dayan, who lost his eye in World War II and then led Israel to victory in the Six-Day War. Your grandmother was Clara Lemlich, 
who came to this country in the bowels of a ship and made a home here out of nothing. She worked all day as a seamstress in a sweatshop and organized a union to fight for better pay. And when her bosses hired thugs who broke her ribs, she came back to the line the next day. You come from strong stock. You will get through this. Okay, so we'll survive. But some of us might like more than that. We might like to be happy. Here's a little story from our tradition. A rabbi is traveling through the countryside, and he checks in for a few nights at a local inn. That evening, as he's going to bed, He can hear through his window the house next door. And the people there are laughing uproariously, and they're singing and having a ball. The next evening, he settles into his room. And once again, the same house next door is filled with laughter and song and rejoicing. A third night, the same thing. The next morning, he asked the innkeeper, who are these people who live next door that are so happy every night? Rabbi, the innkeeper says, no one lives in that house. It's a wedding hall. (laughs) Oh, says the rabbi, that makes sense. No one is happy every day. If only we could be, right? Can we? We were just dealt a bad hand. What does a good card player do? You make the most of it. There's a line from the ancient Psalms. And over the years, it has become a mantra. We recite this verse at all of our festive days. Ze hayom asa Adonai, nagila venis machavo. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. It is my mantra. I say it all the time. Rabbi Sheffrin can tell you. I say it a lot because I love it. It's so appreciative of each day. Each day is a gift, a blessing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice in it. And I love that second part. Let's be glad. It's so encouraging. It beckons us. Let's. Let's be happy. We can wallow, but let's not. Let's choose to be happy. God made this choice. We see it in Genesis right at the very beginning. After completing six days of creation, Vayar Elohim et kol asher asa. And God saw all that God had created. Vehine tov me'od. And behold, it was very good. God said, it was very good. But was it? I mean, God sees everything in the world. And it's not all hummingbirds and butterflies. It's also ticks and leeches and viruses and ignorance and hostility. This is all in the world that God created. 
God could have looked at that expanse of creation and said, behold, it is a mixed bag. (laughs) And that would have been candid, but not so helpful. God chose to see the world in its goodness. And we can see it that way too, if we but make the same choice. In the last two decades, the science of psychology has undergone a revolution. We used to think that the best way to address our problems was to dig into them and analyze them and focus on them. But study after study is showing us that when people are encouraged to spend more time focusing on their problems, their depression lasts longer and runs deeper. The great enemy of well-being is rumination. People who spend more time reflecting on their problems get more depressed. We see it in our own Bible. Two heroes of our Bible are known for their suffering, Job and Ruth. Both of them lost multiple family members suddenly. Both of them lost their wealth and security. But how they responded was quite different. Job famously ruminated over his losses. He sought to understand why all of this had happened to him. He gathered his friends, and together they would discuss the reasons and debate the theories. And he agonized in chapter after chapter after chapter. Ruth did not spend a minute ruminating. She didn't have the luxury. She realized right away that if she did not jump into action, she and Naomi would starve. So she got busy working in the fields and providing food for her and Naomi. All of us face setbacks in life. All of us have a loved one with a real crisis worth worrying about. We can't prevent that. But we can try to control how much of our day we spend dwelling on it. It's the same with the troubles of the world. There's always suffering in the world somewhere. We have to be aware and stand up for change where we can help, of course. But there's a difference between being up on the news and spending four hours each day watching the news. When so much of our day is spent focusing on negative things, we are ruminating and leading ourselves down a path of despondency and depression. Friends, of course we feel distraught. Fires are raging. Floods are devouring. The virus is killing. Where's Mr. Rogers? Where's Mr. Rogers to tell us everything is going to be okay? Actually, Fred Rogers suffered as we do. He wrote about how, as a child, he would read the newspaper or see the newsreels and was utterly despondent about all of the problems in the world. His mother would comfort him and let him know he was safe. 
but that was not all. He wrote, There was something else my mother did for me that I've always remembered. Always look for the helpers, she'd tell me. There's always someone who's trying to help. I did. And I came to see that the world is full of doctors and nurses, volunteers, neighbors, and friends who are ready to jump in to help when things go wrong. Friends, this is a depressing time, but we will make it through this. And as we do, please remember these three things. One, you are stronger than you think. We Jews find a way. Two, Find your joy, and don't let yourself ruminate on all the negative. And three, see the beauty in the world. Look for the people doing good deeds and join them. Here's to a good new year. Zehayom Asa Adonai. This is the day that the Lord has made. Nagila Venismachavo. Let's be glad and rejoice in it. Amen.